Hey everybody, it's Emily at Arg Schooling, and it's time for a book haul. I think I have pulled everything together. I have several piles, um, because they were in different places. But I think I have everything here. These are all the books that I bought in the months of July and August. I know we're at the beginning of August, but the pile was getting out of hand so I decided to do this now instead of waiting till the end of the month. I don't think I'm gonna buy anything else, but don't hold me to that. Whatever I buy after this will just go to the next book haul. So I'm gonna, I've divided this. I have things that I bought just because, things that I bought that I pre-ordered, and stuff I bought for school this year. I think we'll start with the school things because I have a lot. That's probably the biggest pile. So I've talked a bit about what we're doing this year, but and I'm gonna have a whole video. So I'm just gonna run through these pretty quickly since I'm going to be doing a, a separate video talking about them later. But we have Hamlet, that is our play we've decided to do this year. I do a Shakespeare every year starting around seventh or eighth grade. And then we just do one a year after that. And so this year we're gonna do Hamlet. She likes dark, moody plays. She loved Macbeth, so I felt like this would be the next best place to go. And this is the, um, what are they called? The No Fear Shakespeare graphic novels. And that's what we used for Macbeth, and that worked really well for her, so we're going to do Hamlet this year. I have a couple sex ed books. We're going to be doing health this year, and our focus on that is going to be like mental health stuff and sexual health. So I have two things. I bought, this book is called SEX, The All You Need to Know Sexuality Guide to Get You Through Your Teens and Twenties by Heather Karina. This was recommended to me by my friend Spencer, and as was the other book I'm gonna talk about. But um, this is super comprehensive. It's inclusive. There's just everything you could ever wanna know. Then I also have Consent, The New Rules of Sex Education, Every Teen's Guide to Healthy Sexual Relationships by Jennifer Lang, MD. So these are gonna comprise our sex ed portion of health this year. I'm gonna try to run through the rest of these relatively quickly. I have A User's Guide to Democracy, How America Works by Nick Capodiz, Cap Capodiz, I don't know how you say that name, and Hannah McCarthy. This will be one of our civics books we're going to do this year. Um, I'm going to try to incorporate civics every year of high school. We're going to finish the books we didn't finish last year. I think we had a little bit left in um, the graphic novel version of the Constitution. And um, then we're going to pick this up. Before I just gave up on the whole plan, I had bought two books about Chernobyl. <laughs> and decided none of these are gonna work. I have Voices from Chernobyl by Svetlana Alexevich. Nothing wrong with this or the other book, honestly. They're just, it's too dense. It's not exactly what I was looking for. We might do, I might pull some of this because it is interesting. I couldn't find an audiobook for it and it just feels like a lot to read. Um, it's, it's literally like firsthand accounts of what happened at Chernobyl so I might pull like a couple of them to read with her, but we're not gonna read the whole book. And then I bought Wormwood Forest, A Natural History of Chernobyl by Mary Missio, which sounded awesome. But once I got it and I started looking at it, it just looks really dense. And I don't, I don't, I don't think she'll be that interested, but I want to read it because it sounds really cool. This is about um, how the forest around Chernobyl like is flourishing despite the fact that it's radioactive. So that sounds really interesting, but I don't think it's going to be for her. Which is fine. Sometimes you do that. You buy things that you end up not actually using. I have two Mary Roach books that we're going to be reading. I have Stiff, The Curious Lives of Human Cadavers. I've already read this and really enjoyed it several years back. So I immediately thought this would be a good fit for what we're gonna be doing for school this year. And then I bought a book I haven't read by Mary Roach. This is Six Feet Over, Science Tackles the Afterlife. So that'll go really well with our unit on death in our morbid curiosities. I have More Than This by Patrick Ness, which is 
a fiction book about a character who is like trapped in an afterlife and um, sort of like in a limbo state, I think, and trying to figure out what they're supposed to do. I have Ophelia by Lisa Klein. These are both independent reads for her, um, but I do want to read this one first because I'm curious about it. This one is about Ophelia. It's her perspective on the story of Hamlet. Um, and I don't know anything about this book besides what I just told you. It sounds promising, so I might also try to read this one before I give it to her, but we'll see. I was looking for a book set in Pompeii that was a good fit for reading to a 16-year-old. So I bought a Day of Fire, a novel of Pompeii. This is by several authors. So we've got Kate Quinn, Stephanie Dre, Ben Kane, Eliza Knight, Sophie Perrineau, and Victoria Alvier. I have the audio for this too. So I'm going to I'm going to try to give this at least a few chapters and just see what I think. Potentially this would be a read aloud. So if there's anything that it, I think would be easily skipped over like if I feel like it's not appropriate. That's more doable as a read aloud, but we'll see. I have no idea. It's hard to find a book set in Rome that isn't full of like a ton of sex stuff. So we'll, I'm, ex I'm expecting brothels, <laughs> but we'll see what happens. I have two books about Jack the Ripper. I have, ooh, I have From Hell. This is by Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell, and it's humongous, but this is a graphic novel, so I don't know anything about this. It had really good reviews. I'm hoping this is good. I haven't had a chance to, like, read through much of it yet. I wanted to read at least the first little bit and see what I think, but, you know, it should hopefully work for what I'm looking for. And then I bought The Five, The Untold Lives of the Women Killed by Jack the Ripper. Pretty self-explanatory, but um, I've I've had this on my want to read list for years. I own it as an ebook, so I went ahead and bought a physical copy so we could read it together. This these would both be books that we read together, obviously. But um, I have a feeling those are going to be hits. So that's it for things I bought specifically for school purposes. <laughs> Let's move on to pre-orders. These are all books that I pre-ordered and was very excited about. I have Bury Your Gaze by Chuck Tingle. I have not had a chance to read any of these yet, but of the pile I have here, this is at the top of my like need to read it list. I read Camp Damascus last year and loved it. So as soon as I heard about this, I pre-ordered it. Have been anxiously awaiting it and just haven't had a chance. So I'm hoping to get to this soon. I don't really know a whole lot about it besides that it has to do with like Hollywood and the whole like barrier gaze trope. I'm expecting it to be amazing though. I, I, my friend has already read it and has been raving about it. So like I really need to pick this up. I have I Was a Teenage Slasher by Stephen Graham Jones. I went back and forth but decided I needed to go ahead and get this. I I wouldn't call it a love-hate relationship. It's more like a I, I really want to love all of Stephen Graham Jones's work. Sometimes I do. And sometimes it just doesn't work for me. I didn't get the hype for the um, last trilogy he had. What was it called? My Heart is a Chainsaw it was the first book in that, and I could not get into it at all. But I really loved um, The Only Good Indian. So, And I've, I've really enjoyed his novellas. So I really... I really want this to be good. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But this is set in 1989. It's from the perspective of the slasher. So it has so much potential. I need this to be good, though. I need it. I bought Lev Grossman's newest book, which is, by the way, gigantic. Like, this is a beast. You could hurt somebody with this book. <laughs> I loved the Magicians trilogy. So as soon as I learned about this, I pre-ordered it because uh, this is his take on King Arthur and it's following like the misfits that follow King Arthur and I think that sounds great like this is set after King Arthur has died and we're following the misfits and like what they do after 
and I just think it's gonna be fun. I hope, I, I need it to be good. Like, I want this to be something that I am obsessed with. So I'm hoping that is the case. And The House Where Death Lives by Alex Brown. This is a collection of short stories by a variety of YA authors that are all set in the same house, but the house is not like set in any particular space or time. So like there's a lot of weirdness happening with the house itself and all of these different stories are like in the same place, but in different times and like interconnected, but not, and it sounds super intriguing. So I feel like this is probably a book that I'm going to assign Regina to read, but first I want to read some of it. But like, I'm, I'm so intrigued by this. There's a story in here by Tracy Chi. Um, actually, most of these are authors I don't know. So that could be interesting to find some new authors to read. I have And So I Roar by Abby Dare. This is a follow-up to um, The Girl with a Louding Voice, which I've been raving about for ages. But um, this one follows Tia, who is a character you meet in that book. Yeah, it just sounds like it's going to be good. I loved that book so much. I love The Girl with the Louding Voice, so I'm hoping this is equally amazing. But I don't really know a whole lot about it, and I haven't read the synopsis beyond knowing that it's about Tia. It says, a powerful reminder of what women can accomplish when we raise our words, not merely our voices. So, mmm. I'm gonna need to get to that soon. And then I have the newest from Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is The Seventh Veil of Salome. And this is something that I also really want to pick up right now. So many books that I want to read right now. But this one is like set in Hollywood and we're following, I think it's like in the golden age of Hollywood, and we're following a few different actresses who are all vying for this role of Salome, but I think we're also getting the perspective of Salome, which I'm, I'm intrigued by. Like, this just sounds like it's going to be a new favorite. I think so. I'm, I'm really looking forward to reading that. I have some things that I just bought for reasons, as one does. Um, I bought The New Rules of Lifting for Women by Lou Schuler with Cassandra Forsyth. And I've been trying to like work, work on working out and trying to get myself into a good routine. And I've been doing well. But I really want to include more weightlifting and strength training because I just hate feeling so weak. So I feel like this would be a good potential way to do that. Like I like having something written out. So I'm going to hopefully get through that. Technically, I didn't buy this. This was sent to me by the publisher. So um, this was sent to me by HarperCollins. It is How It All Ends by Emma Hunsinger. And it is a graphic novel about um, a girl who is supposed to be going to eighth grade, but she's been skipped ahead to high school. And it's like her experiences dealing with that. And I just thought it sounded interesting. And I thought it might be something my daughter would like. So I was really excited when it was sent to me. So definitely excited to read this. I don't know who I think I am, but I bought manga. <laughs> Sarah got me into... Um, the Oran High Host Club anime, and I bought the first two manga for that. I don't read manga generally. Like, it took me forever to get into graphic novels. Like, I can do it now, but it took me a while to get there. And this is even harder because it's backwards. So, like, I struggle with manga. I've only, I think, read, like, one manga ever. And it was a challenge. So, um, I'm a little nervous about it, if I'm being honest. But I'm going to try. I feel like I know the story enough. I'm pulling it backwards. I feel like I know the story enough now that maybe I can figure it out. So I have the first two. This is like a comedy and it's set in this elite high school. And we're following a character named Haruhi who is a girl who is dressing as a guy and kind of forced to become part of this host club in disguise and um it's just, it's really fun. I don't know. I'm I'm going to try to read that sometime. I read Parable of the Talents. I borrowed it from the library by Octavia E. Butler and loved it. So I bought myself a copy. So now I have it for my shelves. I've already read it. 
I, I, I felt like it was like a trophy buy. Like, I've now completed it, so now I can own it. This is dystopian sci-fi horror, and it's set in a very near future, 2030s. Like, it's set really soon, <laughs> and it's like... I don't know. If I've talked about it a bunch. I'm not going to go into detail here, but it's it's really good. Like, it's so good. Highly recommend. I bought The Safe Keep by Yael van der Rooden. I really bought this because the author's name is Yael, and I love that name. Um, this, this is set, I think, either during or right after World War II, and we're, yeah, I think it's set in the 60s. Yeah, we're following a character living in Holland, after the war, and, um, like, how she's dealing with surviving. I don't know a lot of details, but I, I really like reading stories that are set in the aftermath of an event, so I'm hoping this is good. I got Butcher by Joyce Carol Oates. This was a kind of, like, on a whim purchase, because it kind I mean, this is for me. But it kind of fits the theme of what we're going to be doing this school year. So I thought it might be a fun read. Um, I've never read anything by Joyce Carol Oates before. So this will be interesting. This is a story based on historical documents following the career of Dr. Silas Aloysius Weir, the father of gynopsychiatry, as he ascends from professional anonymity to national renown. So it sounds interesting and weird medicine, surgical stuff. I, I I like it, so I'm hoping that's good. I have Balzac and The Little Chinese Seamstress by Dai CJ. This has been on my, like, need-to-read list for forever, so I finally bought it. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get to it, but I really want to read it. This is set... Um, is this in this enchanting tale about the magic of reading and the wonder of romantic awakening, two hapless city boys are exiled to a remote mountain village for re-education during China's infamous cultural revolution. So I've been wanting to get to this for forever. And then I also happened to w pick up a blind date with a book at our local bookstore. And it was Terry Pratchett, Guards, Guards, which technically I already own, but I have a really nice fancy hardcover. And I feel like this is like a reading copy. <laughs> so I've not read this one yet. This is, um, I think, the first in his Night Watch group of books, group of stories. So um, I don't really know a whole lot about it besides it has to do with a dragon and the City Watch. And that's really all I need to know. Okay, and now we're almost done. I have four more books. I have my, um, I have my Night Worms subscription books that I got in July and August. And if you're not familiar, Nightworms is a monthly book subscription service where they send you two, sometimes three, brand new horror releases every month. So they always include like an indie published book and a like traditionally published. For July, the theme was strange and unusual. And we got the Eyes Are the Best Part by Monica Kim, which is one that I have been really looking forward to. This is another, like, unhinged woman book. I just read Mayfly, and I really want more of that. So I have heard that this is similar, and I'm really excited about that. I don't really know a whole lot, though. Um, it says, Crying in H Mart meets My Sister the Serial Killer in this feminist psychological horror about the making of a serial killer from a Korean-American perspective. It's all I need to know. And then I also got Your Utopia, Stories by Bora Chung. And this is translated by Anton Herr. And these are like a collection of stories all set in um, some sort of utopian, dystopian situation. So I'm really curious about it because I haven't read a lot of short stories like that. It says, these chilling New stories will crawl deep under your skin and change the way you see the most mundane objects in everyday interactions. Sounds great. And then this month, the theme, hold on, the theme was No Way Out, and that's what the bookmark looks like. And this month we got Heads Will Roll. I love this cover so much. This is by Josh Winning. 
Like, look at that. That's great. It's so shiny. Um, this one is set at a camp. We're following an actress who has done, who's behaved badly on the internet, and she is like pulled aside before she gets canceled completely and sent off to this camp where she can like decompress and hang out with other people in the similar situation. It's called Camp Castaway. It's like an adult summer camp, basically, I think. And then, you know, people start to die, and it sounds fun. And then this one is Flowers from the Void by Gianni Washington. And I don't know what this is. In this debut story collection. Okay, so this is a short story collection. It opens portals, bridging the strange and the lonely to the gruesome and the intimate. So 13 dark tales told through the lenses of black, female, and queer narrators, among others which burrow deep into the heart of the gothic to, the challenge, to challenge the conventional nightmare. Flowers from the Void unburies a haunting labyrinth of chilling alternate realities eerily similar to our own. So I'm, I'm excited about that. I like reading short stories, especially when they're horror, especially when they're weird. This sounds great. I'm scared. I'm scared. Oh, I'm already losing things. Okay, you know, that's that's not everything, but that's enough. Um, yeah, so those are the books that I acquired in the months of July and August. It was a lot, but I feel like school planning months are always heavy purchase months because I'm collecting things that we'll need and I happened to need quite a few things. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments what books you acquired over the last two months and like what you're excited to read. And if you've read anything in this stack, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think I should prioritize because there's a lot going on here and I really want to read all of it right now. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in my next one. Happy reading. Bye!